Jonathan from Rain Brothers here, rainbrothers.com. Uh, we're on a job site today in beautiful northern Kentucky, putting in a cistern. Um, just wanted to show everyone what we do to prep the site. So we're getting ready to set a 5,500 gallon tank. You can see we got our pit dug. Uh, it's nice hard uh, clay, um, no risk of, of uh, caving in, um, thankfully. <laughs> we got our, our bedding in the, in the pit. Uh, it's 304 limestone, uh, which is a crushed to inch and a quarter stone. Um, we put a four to six inch bedding down there for the cistern. Got that all leveled out. You can see over here, we got our water line and wire run. Um, we're getting ready to, we got that run all the way to the house, um, to the pressure tank. Uh, as soon as the tank is set, we'll hook that water line right up. We'll hook the pump up in the cistern and we'll run the wire into the cistern and we'll be live at that point uh, once water's in. Um, so that's below frost level. Then over here, We have our downspout drains that we started to run yesterday. Um, this, this drain is uh, four inch schedule 40, uh, which is rated for potable water conveyance. Um, that wraps around the house and you can see the pickups from each of the downspouts here in front. And then of course, everything's sloped toward the cistern so that uh, water flows into the cistern without it standing in the pipe. Um, also, you'll notice that we have uh, the underside. A lot of times if there's a little void space under the pipe, we like to bed it with stone. So you can see the, the, um, how, how we do that. We bed the, the pipe with stone and then cover over top of it with dirt and then we'll grade that off. So all this is flowing right to this spot. We got another drain line run from the back side of the house coming around. They're going to meet here. They'll tee here and then we'll put our pre-filter in in just a little bit um, and connect all that right to the cistern. We also, uh, if there's even a slight chance of rain, um, if we don't finish running the drainage to the cistern in one day, we'll make sure to put a short piece of pipe. It's not glued, it's just dry fit into this um, with, a, with a stub out going, with a riser going up to the top so that if it does rain, this pipe is going to fill up. We don't want to fill up this trench with water and muddy everything up. So it's a good, good idea to section that off. Or what, what we often do, if we don't have a short piece of pipe laying around, we'll just stick a shovel in here um, and rest this on the shovel so that it sticks up above the trench. So this is our, this is our prep. And again, this water line is run right under here um, in a separate trench, not this same drainage trench, but it's it's over this way a little more um, and that's run to the house and the reason that we don't want to put these in the same trench is because that water line trench will definitely settle we don't want it it's settling underneath this our drainage pipe and throwing off the the uh, positive slope to the cistern so here we are on the inside of the house and uh, if you recall i mentioned that that water line already is run to the inside of the house this is where it comes through the basement wall again below frost level um, in a little bit, we'll seal that off with hydraulic cement, uh, pretty that up a little bit. But that water line is run directly to a pressure tank. Um, the wire uh, that we run out to the cistern, we're going to run that directly into the pressure switch. And then uh, um, power supply from the panel will come in on the other side of the pressure switch. This is a uh, direct berry rated wire, submersible rated pump wire. Um, so that's going into the pressure switch. That's gonna, this switch is gonna control that pump, turn it on and off. Water's coming into the pressure tank, then going through our two-stage filtration system with the UV sterilizer, which will uh, sterilize any bacteria that might be present in the line. And this, in all, will purify that water coming through. Here we are setting the 5,500 gallon cistern. We got the bottom half already in the pit, top half coming, you can see that uh, where that green um, sealant is, that's where our water line connection is going to be on the cistern. We're now getting ready to set the pump in the cistern. We got the cistern in the ground and we put the first half of our pitless adapter, we 
threaded it into the side wall of the concrete cistern down there. Um, cast our tanks with a threaded coupling so we can thread that right into it uh, nice and rigid and then here's our pump setup this is a franklin c1 our franklin c1 uh, 10 gallon a minute pump um, we put the floating intake sleeve uh, yeah, this is something we we um, developed floating intake sleeve for the pump this draws water from towards the top of the cistern uh, all the sediment that gets in the cistern is going to settle to the bottom so drawing toward the top of the water level is uh will will draw much cleaner water we got a normally open float switch on the pump this will uh, normally be in the in the upright position like this when the water level gets down it clicks right there that shuts the power to the pump off so it doesn't burn up the pump um, and then we're going to run this wire here all the way up to the top of the uh, cistern and there are three barrel leads exposed one black, one white, and one green. In this case, it's a 230 volt motor, so the black and the white are gonna be the two hots, and the green is the ground. The pump is set in the cistern now, and the pitless, the, the pump just rests in this pitless adapter. This just slides up, so you can pull the pump out of the cistern without having to get in. You thread a one inch threaded rod into the top of this, from outside the cistern and just pull up on it and it separates this fitting. We got the tank set, the pump is in the cistern. Our next step was to uh, backfill the water line side of the cistern with uh, stone. Um, we, we always try to get that whole side, that whole uh, pump end backfilled with stone um, so that if it settles it doesn't put too much pressure on the on that water line right there um, so we backfill all the way up to the water line connected the water line and then we'll put more stone on top and hook up the pump wire to the cistern so here we are we finished running the drainage to the yz vortex filter um, you can see we teed in up there uh, 45 did here and then we adapted to 4 inch SDR 35 uh, which is a thinner wall than schedule 40 and since this vortex filter is manufactured in Germany they're using uh, European pipe size which is a little thinner so the SDR 35 is what's needed to fit into the gasketed fitting on this vortex filter we made a pad for the vortex filter of the same 304 limestone uh, that's compactable. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna bed this in that same stone. We did seal off the joints here with a with a, a caulking, both the riser and the gasketed fitting, and then used a no hub uh, Fernco rubber coupling on both the the uh, ports on the vortex filter. So this vortex filter, you'll notice it comes in to the top and then there's an eight and a half inch drop i believe it's eight and a half inch right around eight and a half inch um, to the clean water port so the clean water goes out here and the sedimentation any sedimentation will go to the bottom and go out a discharge pipe so we have um, it's kind of awkward the way that it, it works um, and a lot of times the plumbing for it is a little awkward as well this this bottom does swivel so you can adjust your angles, um, but still they go out 180 degrees from each other. So plumbing it, it can be a little strange, but um, what we did, we, we rode this clean water pipe all the way to the cistern. We penetrated the boot on the tank. We're gonna bed all this in, in that 304 limestone to make sure it's cushioned well, it's locked in. And then we have our overflow pipe that daylights out at the end there with a rodent guard, uh, which is our four inch mozzie stopper, uh, which is a mosquito screen rodent guard for the end of that. And that will be the finishing touch before we grade everything out. And uh, that's a complete cistern. Well, it's been six hours since the, we started this job this morning. Um, we got everything in the ground, all the drainage run, graded out. Um, you can see we still have our conduit 
our conduit LB exposed. That's where the wire is coming into the riser. And we also um, have this riser on the YZ Vortex filter. Now this does have rings on it. You can cut down. We still recommend staying above, above grade with it, uh, with the riser. But um, usually we'll leave this all the way up until all finished grading is done on a new build, at which point then we'll, we'll cut it down. But this can be cut down lower. And it's important to make sure this, this vortex filter is level. Uh, that really helps with the, the centrifugal force on the, on the filter itself. Thank you very much. And um, all of these products are available on our website at rainbrothers.com along with detailed uh, drawings, diagrams, and we really appreciate uh, your business and your support, and thank you very much.